During the Rwandan genocide, I lost my parents and most of my brothers and sisters. It was a terrible day for me. I wanted to, to be killed too, uh, because I didn't want to keep on remembering, keep on seeing my, my brothers being killed and even my parents being killed. It was painful, so I wished I, I was killed at that time. I was asking myself, if God is good, why can't he be good to this family and protect us? How can the Bible be meaningful to me if I'm seeing these things taking place and I'm not seeing the presence of God? How can we not lose heart? We take a new we take a Rwanda is a country that's gone through massive transformation in the last 14 years since the genocide. Back in 1994, this country was just, it was a shell, there was nothing left. And yet you look around a city like Kigali today, it's thriving. But as a Christian, what I'm really interested in is the spiritual transformation. But I believe there's been progress there as well. I believe the people of Rwanda are, are open to the gospel. What happened in 1994 has thrown everything into question. Nominal Christianity is, has been seen to be useless. It was of no good. It didn't stop what was going on. And I believe there's a real thirst for true spiritual meaning. People are looking for answers to big questions. After genocide, most of the church uh, were really in a great need of trained pastors. But we had no means or people who are trained now to help us. We realized that we need our own courage. The umu pastor imuri imwe na imwe tukuiji shaga bibiria hariko ugasanga uburjo tuiji shamo aru uburjo bufuye muvite chirezo bjaachu hariko imwe na imwe utajanye nicho bibiria ishaka kufu Back in 2001, the, the leaders of the Evangelical Alliance of Rwanda, they could see they were aware of the spiritual transformation that was taking place in their country. And they realized the most strategic thing they could do was, was to set up a Bible college, the Rwandan Institute of Evangelical Theology. I'm seeing this evangelical college helping me to train more pastors uh, who will train, uh, who, who will go and make a difference in, uh, in Rwanda, in the churches in Rwanda. Bita vuye mu bitekerezo byacu, ahubwo bivuye mu bitekerezo bya Bibiliya. Turashobora kubwiriza ijambo ry'Imana mu kuri kwa Bibiliya, atari mu bitekerezo byacu, ahubwo mu kuri kwa Bibiliya. Ariko kuvaho nje hano ibintu byinshi byarahindutse, nabonye impinduka the teachers we have right now are very excellent because you know they're not people who get only the problem, but people who are imitators of Jesus Christ. We have been going for seven years training these pastors with no, uh, with no premises of our own. At the moment we're working out of uh, school premises, we're renting classrooms from a local church. They get to use them during the day and we have to use them in the evening. And 
The evening is really not the best time of day to be studying theology for four hours. It's always been the desire of the Rwandan church to train their own leaders that's been the driving force behind the college. And we've been delighted to partner with them in doing that and helping them in some respects. But it's, it was their initiative at the beginning and it still is now. But they need people to partner with them. Raising money to build buildings in Rwanda is difficult. And as Christians from around the world, we can partner with them, we can stand alongside them, and we can help them to help themselves by sending out men and women who understand God's word in a deep way, who have been discipled and are ready themselves to make disciples of other people. How can we not lose heart? I kept on asking myself those questions. I think I was not the only one. I uh, have come back to Rwanda to uh, help pastors, help church members uh, to be able to uh, answer some of the questions that they're asking themselves. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God, not to us. So we do not lose heart. Let's go.